What is happening guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, tonight, this evening, whatever it is. Um, for me it's evening, whatever it is by you guys. But I'm gonna be starting to paint the Del Sol. So uh, I know I've probably kind of gone over this a few times, but this isn't gonna be a perfect paint job or anything like that, nothing fancy. It is a nice paint, so we'll see how nice I can make it using uh, my paint booth of a dirt yard and a Harbor Freight spray gun. But you know, the Del Sol, is just my daily driver it's not a huge deal i just wanted to look better than it was and obviously the miata other than it being dusty right now did not turn out bad not too shabby the integra didn't turn out bad but that was also single stage so that's not a huge deal um but yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna just start wiping this thing down and then uh my girlfriend and i we're gonna start masking off the windows and stuff and then i'm just gonna mix up some paint try and get the base coat laid down while i have a little bit of daylight left because i don't want to try and get even coats on that while I'm using, I don't know, night light or something. The clear coat's not as much of a deal because it's clear. I can just lay that as heavy as I want. It's really low viscosity, so the more, the merrier, the better, whatever. Uh, let's get cleaning. So the body is getting shot tonight. The bumpers, uh, the rear bumper's ready. Um, I just need to wash it, and then I just need to scuff up right here. I forgot to do that. And then that's ready. The front bumper is good. I just need to take the lip off and then finish scuffing just the inside of the grill right there. Uh, this is actually all smoothed out, surprisingly. It came out pretty well. Easier than I thought. Uh, I thought I was gonna really have to fight with that and try and chip all the paint off, but thankfully I did not. Uh, the wheels, these are getting painted the same graphite, charcoal, whatever color as the Integra's wheels are, because I have an extra can of that wheel paint left, and I was just gonna clear coat them because I got the clear coat, so may as well do that. Um, yeah, so just, wipe this thing all down i'm gonna go ahead and put up the other tarp thing right here and then we have plastic to lay down because if you can see all this tree stuff um don't want that in the clear or in the base coat or anything so got a bunch of plastic we're gonna lay it all over around the car and then probably lay some up right here because it likes to fall in right there but i think it should be decent but i mean let's let's get to it So it ended up getting pretty dark, pretty darn fast. So we're just gonna get the uh, windows and everything masked up. I already got this half of the car wiped down. She's working on uh, masking it up. And yeah, I guess I'll come out here first thing in the morning because Lord knows it's summer here in Arizona. So it's gonna be 100 degrees by seven o'clock. So won't be any issues with, uh, you know, the uh, whatever the temperature because the last when I, when I panned the Miata it was middle of winter and it was cold so I had to wait for the sun to heat it up not gonna have that issue this time around so yeah uh, just hopefully it all works I mean working with what I got that tarp will definitely help though I mean it definitely stopped the wind from blowing over there and then I said I'll just lay down some more of this plastic stuff on the dirt here and then I'll hose off the yard over there if I need to but <sighs> into the morning we go I decided to just wait till the next day. It is now the next day. Um, because last night when I had the spotlights up or whatever, there were just bugs all over the car. I didn't want to try and deal with that. Um, but I did uh, notice something, and that is the clear coat that I'm using. Um, I, did, I thought I had more of it because I guess I used more than I thought on the Miata because I went super heavy. So this is about half full. This only feels like it's about quarter full, so I don't know why I would have used um, more because this is a four to one, so I don't I don't really know what I was doing there but I'm gonna try and shoot the entire body with this stuff this clear coat I have some more clear coat I have a little bit extra in the shed of a different brand they're both urethane based so I should be okay but just to be safe I'm gonna shoot this with the bot or the body with this stuff and then the other stuff I'm gonna if I don't have enough of that that's what I'll shoot the garnish and the front and rear bumper with because I don't want to try and mix them and find there's a chemical reaction and ruin everything so yes like I said next day those two will be getting shot separate. The garnish is done. I just have to finish touching up uh, those two. And then this is already done. So I'm going to go ahead and just give this a good tack cloth and uh, re-wipe it with wax and grease remover. I wiped it last night, but I don't know. Some creepy neighbor may have came out here or something last night and touched my car with his greasy fingertips or something. You never know. Um, so let's do this. Let's get to uh, painting. Car is wiped down. We got our plastic covering the dirt on both sides. Let's go make some paint. So I'll be using two guns, one for base and one for clear. Uh, and the paint is really simple. It's a one-to-one -one mixture. So one part paint, one part uh, reducer, stir and shoot. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix some of this up and we'll uh, jump right into shooting it.
paint's all mixed up, but before I pour it in the gun, I'm gonna go ahead and run some mineral spirits to this. I cleaned the gun last night. This is a brand new Harbor Freight one. Uh, say what you will, this is all I got on me. So uh, yeah, I just run mineral spirits through it after I've taken it apart and cleaned it so that way I can get out any extra debris or any oils or any other assembly lube that might be inside of the gun. And it helps me get my spray pattern set up so that way I can plug the gun in with the paint and just go. So I'm gonna be honest, I definitely didn't think this one fully through on the color choice. Um, it wouldn't have been so much an issue had I thought about my color choice and realized that I was going from a dark blue to a light blue. So I'm having a bit of issue shooting it. It's just taking a lot more paint than I expected. Um, so I should have enough. I'm not really worried about running out of paint. I just have to layer it up and do little light layers at a time so that way I can get it to get sticky so that way it actually layers because if you try and just glob it up while it's wet obviously that's just going to cause runs in the first place but then on top of that it just doesn't lay as evenly so what we're doing is i'm going on my third coat at the moment and i'm going to try and not make it so watery so that way it kind of stays a little thick you know but yeah other than that it's not going bad i do see a little bit of mistakes in my body work like my antenna shave is a little rumply or ripply whatever um, but other than that, nothing really too severe. Um, that's my only real complaint is the uh, antenna shave. But yeah, third coat. And uh, hopefully this turns out okay. It's such a pretty blue though, so I'm, on, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe it's just because it's in the shade that I'm not seeing its true color. And obviously there's no clear on it yet, so I won't be able to see the depth of it until the clear is laid. But eh, 
working with it. coat is all done I did four total coats because like I said it laid really uh, really light and had to get coverage over some of the other spots and it looks on camera pretty much the same as it did before without all the black and white marks from sanding but uh, in person it is definitely different it's the way I'm looking at it right now it's a very flat blue silver which looks cool um, but yeah you know maybe doing a light blue over a dark blue probably wasn't the best idea but yeah my main main complaints is my little high spot dots from my uh, body polar those are very noticeable and then my antenna shave which is also extremely noticeable um, that I mean it looks better than it did before just having some crappy plate blocking off that wasn't even flush to it and this looks pretty much just as bad as the dings that were there so uh, I Still have a lot to learn. This just goes to show you guys that obviously I am not doing anything different than you guys are. I'm just trying. So let's mix up some clear coat, get that laid down, and then uh, the body will be done. Then I can just finish up the bumpers. Well, the clear is laid and uh, you know to be honest I'm not happy with it so I think what I'm most disappointed in is the shade of blue is uh, not as light as I hoped it for I all the pictures made it look a lot lighter maybe it'll change when it's in the Sun because it is a pearl um, but as for right now as it sits and as the clear coat is still um, drying and stuff I'm I'm not happy with it I don't really like how it looks it's a nice color and all um, but it's just not what I hoped for. So, I don't know, I guess we'll just see what it comes out as in the sunlight. And once it's all cured, I gotta try and scrape off some of this plastic before it keeps blowing into my clear coat as it's hardening. And uh, yeah, I gotta get ready to take the Miata here back down to the dyno because it needs to get finished. Uh, the tune originally was never finished because of issues being half-assed something um, so we're gonna go get that cleaned up hopefully if if he can and then we'll come back to this We'll do the bumpers and then I don't know kind of go from there and see how it looks from there All right, We just got some gas. I got my laptop just in case and we're gonna head over to the dyno and see if we can't clean up the drivability on this thing Well, I'm already done at the dyno. I didn't even get to film 
uh, because it didn't take long. So I got there, there's a few kids there with a 370 or an Infinity um, that Tim was tuning. Uh, he opened it up, he loaded up his last tune, which is not the tune that was on my laptop, I don't believe, but either or, my tune hadn't changed much off of his, just a few different parameters and settings and the field table a little bit. So he did some Excel enrichment changes and a few other changes he didn't mention, but I'm sure I can see him if I open the laptop. Uh, but car feels better for sure. I don't know what he did. It's still a little jerky on and off throttle, and we both noticed that the car for some reason has more TPS noise uh, than should be, because there's points where it randomly wants to jump from zero to 4% just sitting here at idle with the throttle shut. So I gotta figure that out. It could just be uh, maybe a sensor that's I don't know, faulty, we recalibrate, I've recalibrated a dozen times. Um, I don't know what causes TPS noise though, but I've heard that term thrown around a lot, especially in the DIY tuning community, so we'll have to see. But it runs better, that's a start. Let's go home, paint's been curing for a bit now, let's kind of see what we're looking at now. Uh, I did order more clear coats, that way if I need to, I can cut back wet sand or whatever and throw some more on the body but I still ran out and I don't have enough for the bumpers and stuff and I don't feel like using the other stuff that I found in the shed. So, let's get home, see how this looks. The car did great on the drive home. I'm actually pretty stoked. Uh, temps are still, not they're not high. I mean, they're within range, but they're higher than they have been because I haven't been driving the car in the middle of the day like this, especially at freeway speeds. So, I think I'm definitely still gonna need to get some hood vents on this thing because my temps were sitting right around 200 to 205 on the freeway at 4,000 RPM, which is, a little higher than I would like, especially since my thermostat's at 180, so... <laughs> um, see how the Del Sol's looking, though. Okay, we're not looking too bad now. Now that we let it settle for a bit. Now that the sun's in some of it, at least. Maybe this clear coat wasn't so bad after all. And, of course, there's tree poop. Good thing this stuff's already hard. Yeah, we're not looking too shabby, eh? can definitely see my mistakes in my body work, but that's beside the point. As for color, not too shabby, eh? Regardless, I still gotta wait for the new clear coat to show up before I can even do the bumpers and stuff, so... I think this is probably gonna sit where it sits, and uh, just for the hell of it, I might even just give it a wet sand and reshoot some of the clear just to get extra gloss and extra protection, but... I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it looks after I try and polish out a spot, but for now, let's get inside and get some air conditioning. So with this brought us into the next day, and uh, you know, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just the type of paint that this is, maybe it's pearl or something, but once it dried up a bit yesterday and I came back out to it today, uh, the camera's not gonna do it justice, but this is actually turning out to be a pretty sweet color. So I still need to, uh, you know, like I said in the last clip, I need to do the wet sand and then potentially re-clear, especially this side of the car, this side is very dull, and I think it's because I uh, sprayed it too far away, to be honest, and or maybe my clear coat was just old. Um, either way, this side needs to be wet sanded and then I'm gonna re-clear it. Um, but yeah, like this fender looks great, uh, and then this side of the car looks pretty good, minus just being orange peeled. But it's actually pretty neat color. It's like almost a silver in the light. Like, it's, it's pretty cool. But now I'm out here, I got the side skirts off, the front lip off. I'm just gonna give that a quick scuff, finish chipping the paint off right there. And then I'm gonna shoot those with the SEM stuff. Even gave it a little drift stitch because it was cracked. Uh, as for the wheels, I just finished washing these. So I'm just letting them dry out real quick. So they should be dry. So I'm gonna go ahead, try and find some index cards or something so I can mask those off and then uh, shoot those and uh, then I got my front bumper over here which the rear bumper is all prepped I prepped that yesterday garnish is prepped and this bumper I just been chipping away at this thing like literally chipping away like that's all paint chips <laughs> yeah so whereas I thought it was all smooth up here which it is pretty pretty leveled out it's like I caught a corner on one little piece here and then it just all started flaking up so I just took the razor blade and I was just scraping piece after piece after piece so I got time since I'm waiting on the clear coat to come in uh, so I'm gonna just go ahead and try and prep this bumper as much as I can and try and get as good of a finish as I can out of it um, It is pretty beat up from just rock chips and stuff like there is gouges and stuff in it um, But it'll work. It'll work just fine. So I don't know where all my index cards went uh, So I am having to do one wheel at a time at least for now I'm gonna just do it one wheel at a time for the base coat and then I'm gonna go pick up some lunch and then while I'm out I'll pick up some more index cards that way when I clear it I don't have to try and do one wheel at a time 
Um, but yeah, I think it'll be a neat little color. Much better than that raw, old, crappy silver that I, uh, that's just like raw metal. So every time I don't wash the wheels for like a couple days at a time, they get like a grayish, just ugly color. So I think this gun metal will look much nicer. And if you're wondering what I'm actually using, it's just this stuff. Nothing fancy. I went and got some Jimmy John's and picked up uh, some card draws out, so let's go ahead and finish uh, laying the base coat on these and I'll mix up some of that old clear I got and should still be going to pop the top on it. Looks okay, so we'll try it. Well, I'd say that clear coat was still good. These wheels are looking pretty minty right now. Way better than they've ever been since I've owned them. They each got two heavy coats of clear. Uh, I only made five ounces, so two heavy coats should be totally fine with that. But yeah, I'm, I'm stoked on that. Look at that. Well, let's pull these index cards off, let them cure. And uh, probably come back out and slap them on because, I mean, no need to leave them off for now. At least test fit them because I'm going to have to keep the front ones off to get the bumper on. So because I have to uh, wait, obviously, for the clear coat to show up, i got nothing else going on. So in the meantime, I'm still working on figuring out this stupid clutch on the Integra. Uh, I've been bleeding it for a week straight now, and to no luck, I've tried literally everything other than taking the master off and disassembling it or flipping it upside down um, or something like that to try and get the air out. But I have bench, or I had, I mean, it's not like I changed anything on the master. The only thing that I changed was the sleigh because I presumably went bad, stripped the screw, couldn't bleed it. Um, but yeah, let me just kind of recap you guys, I guess, on what happened. I was driving, uh, I don't know where the pedal went to the floor, it was super squishy, had like an inch of pressure, if that. So I limped it home, tried to bleed it, slave cylinder, screw, bleeder, screw stripped out, so I replaced that, it's a brand new one. Um, and I've been trying to bleed it for a week. So I've tried gravity bleeding, I've tried single pumps and hold, I've tried pumping and holding, I've tried vacuum bleeding, I've tried reverse bleeding, I've tried bleeding at the firewall fitting that I have, I've tried bleeding at the master cylinder. So pretty much what it's doing is if you just rest your foot on the pedal, it sinks into the floor and then you can pump it up and it'll hold. And then every two or three pumps, it'll just go straight to the floor again. And even though at the slave and stuff, I've everywhere I bleed it, I've got a solid stream, like no bubbles. So I can't figure this out. So what I'm going to do right now is I uh, just went actually to the brake masters up the street because the guy there, John, is super, super knowledgeable. And uh, sorry if the air compressor is super loud. But I explained to him as a thing, and I was going to see if maybe they'd try and bleed it for me as a last ditch effort since I cannot do it. And he said that to him, that is a guaranteed failed master. So you know what? Um, in spite of everything else, what do I have to lose by taking it apart? So I'm going to rip this thing out of the car really quick. It's really tight fit so I won't be able to film it because I'm using the Hush cable to Hydro so it's like up under the dash. Um, and if it's a Veiled Master, then I can just swap that out or rebuild it and hopefully be good to go. I'm just so tired of trying to bleed it and getting nowhere. So uh, yeah, let's pull this thing out really quick and hopefully we can get this stupid car back on the road here in the next couple of days. That would be fantastic. So I decided to uh, finally take this apart a couple days later because that last clip where it was on the box was just a few days ago. So um, I didn't realize how simple this was. So I went down to uh, the Brake Masters right up the street. It's like a franchise one. The owner is actually super knowledgeable, really cool guy. He's got a couple classic cars and stuff. But I told him, I kind of last ditch effort was like, I can't get this thing to work. This is what it's doing. What's wrong? He said, your master is definitely bad. So. Um, sure enough, I took it out and I ran it up there because he wanted to dissect it with me. So I didn't realize it was just a snap ring that held it in. I guess I didn't really look. But sure enough, this thing is bad. So uh, this front seal is tapered. 
it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be flat. So the issue with that front seal is when you push the piston in, it's uh, folding over on itself. And then this back seal, I don't know if you can even see that. It's just totally torn. A um, little hard to see, but see that kind of a glisten? Yeah, that thing's totally destroyed. So that would be why my clutch would not bleed because the air was not, it wasn't building any pressure. The air was slipping right past it. So uh, Willwood actually sells rebuild kits for these. It's just a new snap ring and some seals. Um, but I didn't know that till after I had ordered a new one from Hush. So Hush Performance hooked it up. Well, I mean, I, I paid for it, but um, yeah, Robert hooked it up. He's a good dude. So he was able to sell me just the master individually. So I got a new master coming on the way. And once I get around to it, I'll order a rebuild kit and uh, rebuild this one. Well, sanding block here, a little foam block. I'm just gonna start with some 1500 and see what that does. Um, I have anywhere from 800 to 2500, I think, or 2000 at least. Uh, but yeah, I mean, hopefully we can get some shine out of it. If not, when my clear coat comes in, I'll just lay some more. It's not the end of the world. I just don't wanna have to do the extra work if I don't have to. So let's see what we got hidden behind all this orange peel. Nice and drenched. So with the wet sanding though, you don't want to apply any pressure. If there's one thing I've learned from this, go super light on the edges, don't burn through. But just in general, just use the weight of your hand when you're doing this. And after it starts to stick a bit, that's when it's starting to smooth itself out. This was cut down from 1,000, yeah, 1,000 to 2,000. So, yeah, just gotta throw some polish on it and see what happens, but. Uh, this will be the telltale if this car has any hope for it because I mean if you guys remember when I painted the DA That thing was nasty looking when it first came out. I mean it's single stage. So, I mean same but different I guess I don't know whatever, but it was cloudy. It was ugly. It was dark flat blue And now it's all shiny despite there being three inches of dirt on it. So I have hope that this car can clean up well and uh if you guys already don't know, if you guys are local and you need your cars detailed, you need your paint corrected because he's actually doing a uh, paint correction on a scat pack this coming week. So hit up Revision Detailing, aka my brother, and uh, get your car serviced. And if depending on the day of the week and how broke I am on that day, you might get might get me out there with him. <laughs> but yeah, so let's uh, let's see what this ha what this cleans up to be. After just one pass. This thing, like you can see the line right there. After one pass, no polish, or just the polisher, no wax or nothing like that to even enhance it. This is just the normal shine, so I think there's hope. And on that note, I'm gonna end this video off here, guys. So hopefully you found it enjoyable. If you did, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you liked it. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you've considered subscribing. Uh, probably next video, we're gonna try and get that thing finished up. Um, Hopefully get some more clear laid on that one side and maybe try and get a little bit more shine out of this driver's side. Um, but anyways, guys, do what you love. Forget about the rest. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.